Hi, my name is Christina Wade and I teach at Dupont Elementary, 5th grade, and this is my 10th year. Our classroom is a mixture of um, kids who are on a regular 5th grade level and then I have um, special needs kids. I have students with IEPs. Um, most of my math lessons have to be hands-on for those kids that um, have um, learning issues with um, with anything other than hands-on. It, it's it better for them if they get to see it. So most of my math lessons are typically hands-on and then we move to the more abstract concepts. To kind of help my kids learn, um, learn some of the fractions, review some of the fourth grade fraction concepts, and to kind of um, link some science in, I, uh, found a book on the life cycle of a frog and um, then different predators that can possibly affect the numbers of tadpole tadpoles in a given pond environment. Um, so what we did was we read the book and um, we brainstormed all the different predators that the tadpoles could possibly come in contact with and what I did was I made it into a math problem with fractions. If they started out with a certain number of tadpoles in the pond and then um, different predators would eat a certain fraction of those um, tadpoles, I, at the end um, how many tadpoles were going to be left. What I used to help the kids see the, the fractions is we had um, little tadpole die cuts that they had um, and then they would take and group those tadpoles um, as we went through the fraction and they would take the ones that were eaten out and they wouldn't be included in the second and then third fraction. My whole thinking behind using the tadpoles is um, with the kids taking the fifth grade science SOL, it has both fourth and fifth grade material in it. So anytime I can review a fourth grade science concept in with the math um, is always a bonus. Um, so with the predators and the prey and the life cycles of the tadpole, that's all fourth grade science SOL. So to put that in with the fifth grade math um, gave me a little extra. Great diving beetles. They chase the young tadpoles. They all are looking for dinner, aren't they? Sickleback feels hungry. He opens his mouth wide. The little gray tadpoles wiggle their tails and swim away through the water. That's a close call, isn't it? The great diving beetle feels hungry too. His hairy legs beat through the water. There are 24 little tadpoles in our pond, okay? Are there normally 24? No, they lay hundreds of eggs at a time, right? Yes. This is what we call a sample. We're only going to deal with 24 of the tadpoles, okay? So I want to go over some fraction stuff with you guys before we figure out how many tadpoles. Show me half. How do we make a half? Show me half. Half of your tadpole. Show me half. Okay. You think you're right? Mm -hmm. Can you put half off? Let me take this here tomorrow. You want to swim on? Show me okay, half. Okay, we're two right now. We'll break down. Did you lose so? Did you already? Someone already passed. You only have 21. So some of you guys didn't make it. Through. All right. All right, so how many tadpoles are in a half? How many are in a half? You did, okay, one, you know a half is two groups, right? Okay, so you did one and one, one and one, one and one, next time I make you that a card stop. One and one, one and one, one and one, one, one. Okay, did anybody do it differently? I know Nathan did. How did you do it? I did it. I just let him in. I just thought my man 24 divided by 2, so I did. 
12. Okay, so you divided it. And that's, isn't that kind of what he did too? But he just didn't, he did it physically. Or you did it in your head? That's kind of the same. He kind of, y'all two are kind of the same. But you're a little bit different. All right, Nathan, how'd you do it? I counted 12 and Okay, so you knew that half of 12, of 24 was 12. Show me fourths. Show me four. So think about what you did for halves. I said fourths, right? And so you know that fourths, that that bottom number, you know what that bottom number's called? You know what that bottom number's called? bottom number's called? The denominator. The denominator tells us how many groups we're going to have, right? This number tells me what? How many groups I'm going to have, right? Yes. That's what you're telling me, correct, James? Okay, so you said four groups of six. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see if he works. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that works. We have equal groups, right? Now some of you guys I saw had six groups of four. Right? So we've got to make sure that we realize what this denominator, this bottom number here is telling us. Show me thirds. Are you eating tadpoles? Yes. Some of the problems that um, I see when we do lessons like this is the kids uh, getting around to all of the groups because I usually have them work in groups. So when I pair them in groups, I usually pair a struggling student with a um, on level student or above level student uh, and sometimes getting around to the groups can be a little difficult and um, also correcting any misconceptions that may come up uh, making sure those don't um, go any farther uh, but usually my kids do fairly well um, and they work very well together When I'm checking to see how well the kids are understanding a concept, I usually give them a quick little kind of like a spot check. They might have two or three questions on that topic right before um, class is over. And then on Fridays, we do a spiral review, so quiz. And um, I, that way I take concepts from the beginning of the year and they see them over and over and over and over again. Um, and so they're assessed on those throughout the year. Um, and then we look at benchmarks and then ultimately SOLs. Um, if we see that, is, that a particular group or handful of students are struggling with um, a certain topic, what we do is um, twice a week we do a small group pullout where um, I will do a 20-25 minutes on a, the topic that we're currently learning and then they will go, we'll rotate another group and that group will then go to a review uh, remediation um, lesson with a special ed teacher that works with us um, and then um, we have a third group that usually has a game that's some review math concept and we rotate those three groups among the three of us. The Comp Ed program uh, gave me a huge amount of resources and um, a totally different way of thinking about fractions. Uh, it helped me move away from the paper and pencil um, algorithm into hands-on um, lessons, and which is I've seen a great increase in my students' understanding of fractional concepts.